Section 122 of the National Credit Act states that 1. A consumer may terminate a credit agreement at any time by paying the settlement amount to the credit provider in accordance with Section 125. 2. In addition to subsection 1, a consumer may terminate an installment agreement, secured loan or lease of movable property by A. Surrendering to the credit provider the goods that are subject of that agreement in accordance with Section 127 or B. Paying to the credit provider any remaining amount demanded in accordance with Section 127, Subsection 7. Fellow South Africans, pardon me for just jumping straight to the complicated matters. Let's take a couple of steps back. This video is about trading in or selling a finance car, the Getting Rid of the Lemon Series Part 1. Today we'll be focusing more on the theory part, practicals will follow later. Dishing out this type of content makes me feel like a professor. And like Vets or UCT must just give me an honorary doctorate for my content, cause I would love to wear a red gown one day. I already have the doctor title, all I need is just to take pictures in the red gown, but going back to school is not an option for me. I kind of feel like mainstream careers are just saturated now. Postgraduate degrees are slowly becoming as useful or as useless as metric certificates. Our brothers and sisters are sitting at home with law degrees, medicine, accounting and teaching to name a few. It's about time we start exploring other avenues because after 2030, degrees will no longer open the doors they used to open back in the 90s. Education is still important though, but as a collab, let's talk about trading in or selling a finance car, step by step. When you're planning to sell or trade in your finance car, it is of utmost importance to note that in as much as a consumer has the right to settle a credit agreement early, there might be a penalty if you terminate a large credit agreement without notice. And according to the National Credit Act, a large credit agreement refers to any loan above 250,000 rands. The penalty is usually not more than three months interest and it varies from institution to institution, but it should never exceed three months interest. So if your car loan agreement is above 250,000 rands, it is advisable to first give the bank a notice before you settle your account because early settlement penalties may contribute towards you having a shortfall after letting go of your car. Before we continue with this video, let me explain what is shortfall in simple terms for those who are clueless about finance. Shortfall is when the value of your car is less than what you still owe the bank. Let's say you borrowed 250,000 rands from a bank to buy a car. After paying back 50,000 rands of the principal amount, your loan balance will go down to 200,000 rands. Now let's assume at that point you decide to trade in your car for whatever reason and the dealership offers you 180,000 rands for the car. 200,000 rands which is the amount you still owe the bank minus the 180,000 rands you're gonna get when you sell the car leaves you with a shortfall of 20,000 rands. That's the money you'd still be owing to the bank after letting go of your car. Shortfall is a self-induced problem and I'll teach you how to avoid it just now. Number one, try to put down a good deposit when you structure your car loan because if you don't pay a deposit, the moment you drive your car off the showroom, it depreciates in value and it will instantly be worth less than what you just borrowed from the bank to procure it. Paying a deposit will absorb the depreciation by bringing your break-even point closer. Without a deposit, your break-even point may be in two and a half or three years depending on how you structured your loan. Number two, avoid adding extras to your car loan. Dealerships have a tendency of selling you extra stuff such as extended service plans, smash and grab and other silly extras and the cost of those things is usually loaded to your car loan. Instead of paying an installment of 4,600, you may end up paying 5,000 because of the extras. The thing is you end up taking a 220,000 rands loan to buy a 200,000 rands car. The loan you are taking is more than what your car is worth from day one and when you factor in depreciation, ziakal, you are going down. Number three, avoid buying a car with your emotions because more often than not you end up buying an avocado that doesn't hold its value well. Make sure you consider the resale value of the car you are planning to buy if you know you may want to let go of it in the near future. This is a bit tricky because there's no scientific method to determine which cars have good resale value. It's just a finder finder. 
supply and demand and reliability of the car are some of the things that contribute to the market value of your used car. Number four, hunt for better offers when you are selling your car. Don't settle for a low offer that will leave you with a huge shortfall. Dealerships usually give the most ridiculous offers, but they are the safest option and with them, there's less admin. Always weigh your options before selling your car, unless it's an emergency. Number five, don't upgrade your car unless it's an emergency. The mere fact that there's a new 2022 Polo model doesn't mean you should trade in your old car for the new model. Keep your 2019 Polo TSI, you are not missing out on anything. Chances are you'll get a stinking lemon that will spend more time at the workshop than on the road. But as Paul Melapo before our VW friends start catching feelings, cause they are watching. Now that we have laid the foundation, it's time to sell the car. And the most important thing is to know what's your settlement amount before hunting for offers. A settlement is the amount you are still owing to the bank. When you sell or trade in your financed car, there's three things that might happen. Number one, you may have a shortfall after letting go of your car and in some cases the shortfall is rolled over to your next finance deal. Let's say you trade in your car and you are left with a shortfall of 50,000 rands and the next car you are planning to buy costs 200,000 rands. The 50,000 rands will be added to the 200,000 rands and the loan for your new car will be 250,000 rands but the car costs 200,000 rands. This is just a great recipe for disaster. Number two, if you sell the car at your break-even point, you will let go of it and walk away with nothing. Not that you are giving away the car for free. The dealership will pay, but all the money will go straight to the bank to settle your loan. Number three, your car might be worth more than what you owe to the bank. And in this case, after settling your loan, you'll be left with some change which you can use as a deposit for your next car. Like in my case with the Polo GTI. The people's car was worth more than my outstanding loan amount, hence I got some cash back after selling the car. I got an offer of 520,000 rands from my buy cars, but I didn't sell the car to them because they were gonna sell the car to someone else with the existing issues and I couldn't let that happen. So I sold the car to VW Palm Motors for 520,000 rands after a fight and I'll share the full story in part 2. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more car content in Mzansi Context.